seventh episode of the Yay Query Podcast, brought to you by Tiny CDN and Devo. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the seventh episode, episode six of the Yay Query Podcast. I am Alex Sexton from Austin, Texas. I'm Adam Sontag from New York, New York. I'm Rebecca Murphy from Durham, North Carolina. Uh, Paul from Boston, Massachusetts. And today we have a special guest with us. Uh, We have the project lead of the Dojo Toolkit. We are fortunate enough to have Mr. Peter Higgins of Greenville, Tennessee. Yay, Pete. Thank you, Pete, for being with us. This is this is a treat to get you to be here. Thank and you for having me. You guys are wonderful. Well, we'll Thank see you. about that. Right, well, right. Yeah. yeah, to be the term. <laughs> <laughs> to be seen. So before we get into talking about Pete and Dojo and stuff, um, I just had a little announcement. Um, I want to let everybody know who's listening that we are having a jQuery camp down here in North Carolina on January 30th. Um, w- the proceeds are going to benefit open source JavaScript projects, of course, including jQuery. And this just in, Pete Higgins here with us tonight will uh, be joining us for the camp along with Scott Gonzalez, the lead developer for jQuery UI and jQuery's own Alex Sexton. So check it out at ncjQueryCamp2, that's the number two, dot eventbrite.com and uh, hope to see you there. Adam, you've got some news about a new little tool for us. Oh, yeah. So the other day, some guy came in to the jQuery IRC show and posted his code to fixie.org, um, which I thought was pretty awesome um, because it has a really nifty feature that, unlike any other paste bin I've seen, um, it shows you other people's updates to your paste in real time. So um, you can automatically see other changes as they come in. You don't have to relay one URL back and forth, and then the URL changes. Um, And I think you can also get um, automatic diffs uh, in there. So uh, um, fixie.org is really sweet. And um, yeah, I think it it kind of plays uh, a more real-time version of like gists on GitHub, which everyone kind of loves these days, Um, Mm -hmm. except for, for, you know, it's more real-time, which is kind of sweet. Also, uh, this week, uh, Taylor Swift turned 20, which is uh, awesome. Happy and birthday, Taylor. Yeah, happy, happy birthday, birthday, Taylor. Uh, and she started straightening her hair. I don't know if it's going to be a permanent thing. I guess we'll see that in the next version. Hard uh, to kill your it, it might be like an alpha thing that she's testing out. So uh, I, guess, I guess we'll see that soon. Um, uh, Paul has a couple things to say about a, a few recent commits. To yeah, the jQuery for anyone that's watching uh, the 1.4 development um, that's going on, there was a there was a commit that we just saw a little bit ago, and um, it's causing quite a ruckus. Uh, so it it originally came from Carl Swedberg, um, author of the Learning jQuery and and the jQuery Reference Guide. And it's, uh, the commit is basically adding curly braces around all the if and else statements in the jQuery code base. And so, what? Yeah, yeah. So, so curly braces are, you know, no. commonly, commonly regarded as a good practice. Um, any, any development guide or, or, or best practices um, that, that, that covers this definitely recommends um, using braces to, to indicate things as opposed to single line if statements. But Paul, but, we could save two whole bytes. Wow, I'm glad that you you you, you mentioned that. But um, YUI compressor and Google Closure, uh, the compiler, take advantage of of that whole fact. So s- certainly in your actual development source, there's no reason at all to really drop them because it it can be optimized uh, when you when you build it out into production. But this has caused a firestorm of debate <gasps> in, the, in the comments of the commit. And people are saying, oh, no, it's less readable now. And how dare you add these braces in? And it's, it's terrible. And my, my favorite commit is coming from Defunct, which is uh, he, he actually is one of the creators of GitHub. And um, referencing the, 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 the well-known open source um, uh, argument of, of the bike shed, um, he said, I think we should paint it red. 
<laughs> so, yeah, so not that that kind of connection was lost on a lot of people, and and it, the the debate actually still goes on and on. Um, whatever, it's just kind of we have better things to do. Let's Absolutely. Let's move on. In the spirit of moving on. Uh, In the spirit. And the spirit of hating. <laughs> In the spirit of moving on, we have tonight with us. Peter Higgins, and he is going to help us bring in a new segment that we're going to call Nay Query, Yay Query, Nay Query, Nay Query, a whole lot of sadness and anger too, so keep up your code, or we will come looking for So with us tonight is Peter Higgins. He's the project lead of the Dojo Library, and uh, he has some opinions to share with us. But before we get started on those, will uh, Pete tell us a little bit about yourself and and about your shack in Tennessee and whatnot? Well, thank you for the the humble introduction. Yes, <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, there's there's absolutely nothing um, to say about me. I'm a JavaScript programmer. That lives in a shack in Tennessee. So it's not a shack. Roll. It's not a shack. It's a very nice. It's house. a shack. It's got an outhouse and it has an outhouse. I found out I have a I cistern that works even yesterday. Oh, cistern? Nice. Yeah, it's amazing. What is a cistern? It's like a hole in the ground that collects water. Water, yeah. Yeah, this really? one's made of brick and it's been collecting water in my house. In my opinion, it's not a shack unless it can slam dunk and it plays for the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's true. That's true. <laughs> hey, totally. Yeah. totally. So, 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 Pete, from your from your shack in Tennessee, you're like in charge of this whole other library that's not jQuery, and you guys just had a release this week. So, can you tell us a little bit about that? We did. We released uh, Dojo 1.4 um, two days ago, three days ago, something. Uh, phenomenal release. Uh, it's been, I guess, nine months uh, about that we've been working on this uh, particular release since 1.3, and just lots of little enhancements, performances, uh, enhancements, just across the board. It, it goes on and on. So, and it seems like there's um there 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 was in the release notes there was um, mention of a new module in there, um, dojox.jq. Dojox. Dojox. Yeah, well, I, I like that you, that you, uh, pronounce it that way, which is oh, nice. Yeah. Because, uh, like, as a, as an aside, uh, Alex Russell, the, the, uh, former project lead of, uh, Dojo Toolkit, um, used to, to make fun of me for calling it the degenerative disease, degenerative disease that it is, Dojox. But <laughs> it, it really, it's not. And um, it's, it's like our little experimental, like, uh, plug-in repository thing. But uh, we did, we did a jQuery compatibility shim kind of thing that, hmm. that worked out. Uh, it's, it's aimed at 1.3. We haven't accommodated for whatever has changed in 1.4. Yeah. Um, because we uh, based it on the unit tests and stuff uh, of the original uh, 1.3. So, but it's just, you know, like, it, it, I, I always end up back at the same argument that it's just fucking JavaScript, right? And it doesn't matter what the API around, like, the only thing really that libraries do for me anymore is event connection, because I don't want to think about the cleanup and all, all that nonsense where I have to. So like these libraries are just syntactic sugar over top of the stuff that we should know in JavaScript. And um, so we we came up with a way to wrap what we're doing in Dojo uh, as far as namespacing things or whatever into jQuery and making the API uh, symmetry better because ultimately it's right. and just JavaScript. I have to interrupt you because you, you, you just used... Uh uh, just JavaScript. It's all just JavaScript. Uh, I just want to point out that that is a very popular quote these days. I think just about every person who's in a tough situation uses that quote. And I just want to point out that that is Peter's own quote. So if you ever hear it, not it's just not JavaScript. It's just JavaScript. 
Peter Higgins. I mean, well, I mean, I don't know. Like, you can't flesh. even quote something so short and and that's true. Whatever. Like, <laughs> also, like, also, what kind of tough situations does that get you out of? Uh, all of them. Uh, I was re- I was recently awesome. pulled over. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, then, and, and when he the, pulled out the, the glass, and I was like, no, 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 it's, 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 it's just JavaScript, buddy. No, but but really, no, it, it it can pull you out. Like when you think, like you hear a lot on the interwebs, right? Like the 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 feeds, the Reddits, the Twitters, and all the things that that say, like. Oh, I'm so frustrated at X library, or I'm so happy about X library, or blah blah blah. You know, it doesn't matter because ultimately, at its core, it's just JavaScript. And what we're focusing on is making JavaScript the first class language that it is, right? Like, and and pushing it through the browser because it's so ubiquitous there. And and now there's a lot of traction being gained on the server side aspect of it as a language, which doesn't really apply to jQuery so much as it does, you know, the grander scheme of things, but um, jQuery is written in JavaScript, so it, it definitely applies. Right. It also uh, it also comes up a lot when people are talking about kind of the war between the libraries that I think everybody in the actual community realized doesn't really exist. I mean, you don't, like, see John Resig and, uh, you know, I have spies. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, oh, never mind. Well, I mean, I didn't think you wanted to get into that. You, on this, you didn't but, know uh, about the spies? Like, oh, no, I, I, I'm I sorry. Didn't like, want, I didn't think you I've been, I've been recapping or, lost or episodes, so I'm all, all right. I'm all set up to be paranoid. <laughs> right. Let's not, let's not unveil any JavaScript secrets of, of you, you project lead people. But uh, back to this, this whole Dojox. I always called it Dojo X. What did I know? This Dojox JQ thing. Like, was this? Like a fun little experiment that you did, or are you trying to go somewhere with this, or you know? I don't know. What's, what's I'd, the say point it's a here? Little, I'd say it's a little bit of both. Like I didn't really participate in the the programming of it. Like I I wrote this kind of like uh, it's called Plug D. Right. Right. Like, and that was I was drunk on Nyquil, and if you've never had a really bad flu or something and taken too much Nyquil, you'll, you'll you know the experience. <laughs> that, or whatever. I was like, you know what? Dojo doesn't have some things that jQuery has, and because it's just JavaScript, I can do this. Like, it's not a big deal. Check this out. Ha ha ha. And I did, and I wrote like this whole little mini library that has these functions that are named like jQuery things that work, right? And so I, I kind of gave that feel to Dojo uh, then, way back uh, maybe a year and a half ago, that I didn't really advertise or market well. And then, like, jQuery is definitely, you know, it's, it's there, and people understand it, and people kind of associate with JavaScript. And um, if we can make, if we can implement something that, that, that makes jQuery plugins and all these like random bits of code that are just built on this like fundamental you know baseline JavaScript thing like adder getter setter kind of like event connection stuff that we need normalized for us across browsers then that's great like whatever library you're using you can use all these different these components so we made a like a stab at jQuery dojo compatibility because that was the easiest so so um Peter, like I see you, 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 you've definitely gotten involved into, uh, like, reach your hand across the aisle, as it were, and and definitely reaching out into the jQuery community, um, and and you have a good handle on kind of what jQuery offers. So, like, I wonder from your perspective, um, do you see like what are the shortcomings of jQuery, um, and and despite those jQueries, why you why do you think that that jQuery um, has a bit more popularity in kind of like the JavaScript development scene? It's kind of a loaded question. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Okay, so what, what uh, I don't know. Like, I, I don't want to say what I'm supposed to say. But, like, jQuery is, and it, it, it's, it's a, a little abstraction around the DOM, and it's a, uh, kind of, you know, and I, I hate to admit it, and I hate to admit it on the record, but it's it's elegant, it's nice, it's concise, it's whatever, but there's yeah. more to application development, and there's more to JavaScript than wrapping stuff in an object that 
acts like an array, blah, 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 you know, like the stuff that you really know once you get beyond introductory JavaScript stuff, you're like, you start picking it apart and you're like, oh, wow, I need it to do this, but I'm, I'm not able to, right? So it's, it's beautiful, but it's a subset of what Dojo has to offer, in, in my opinion, because we have the Dojo query and it does the same DOM selection stuff. We're, we're working to normalize that, but even, gosh, even they can't agree. And <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny landscape that we live in, guys. What, a, what do you think, the, what, what's your, your least favorite part about jQuery? Least favorite? Oh, you want you want the this statement, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, how he how he keeps scoping everything. Yeah, like this this means something in JavaScript, like, and that's and that's my that my major complaint, right? Like the functionality or the 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 functional nature of JavaScript is kind of lost when you force the 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 execution context to something every time. Um, so you're talking about like in events how this refers to the element that was clicked or or whatnot or no. in the each or in like the dollar dot fn dot each right function. right like right. I, I actually don't mind it in in the event connection right like this referring to the element that was clicked but I don't know exactly what it is in jQuery actually what is uh, is it a jQuery object or is it the element itself. The element it's itself. The element so itself. It okay. changes. If you're writing a plugin, it's the jQuery it's object. It's the jQuery object. But most of the other time, it's the it's the element. Okay. But so <laughs> I was gonna say I think that one on in jQuery's defense, once you get used to what jQuery always does, because there's not exactly a ton of cases where it's manipulating right. what this is, you do get pretty used to handling. Right. But as soon as you need to grow beyond like. Oh no! I need to refactor this so it's not an inline anonymous function, and I can right. use the same thing I've copied. Like, like it's great that you can write like an entire application in one line of code, but if you need to du duplicate that one line of code eight thousand times with a slight variation, it's not maintainable, right? So, right, yeah, I, yeah. Can, I can see definitely see that. I was gonna say, you know, one example of that you were talking about things that you can't do in jQuery, but you can do in JoJo, but they're even adding support for in jQuery, but not quite, is this whole scoping for event handlers. In jQuery 1.4, we're getting um, scoping for event handlers, but you still can't control the scope for, you know, Ajax, uh, callbacks, and pretty much anything else. Whereas, you know, I even know, Pete, you wrote a plugin for just always handling the scope for any function that you want, right. which is pretty... So this is like a, a, a little-known argument in the jQuery dev thing, and I try to bring it up, and I, I guess I might seem like a troll every time I try and bring it up, <laughs> but I, I definitely disagree with jQuery's decision uh, in the bind that they did, where they're, they're allowing you to pass a context now, so like power users can utilize this. It, it, it seems fundamentally flawed to me that you do it a half assed like this to only put it in one or two functions and still shelter everyone from the the meaning of this and the meaning of context or whatever overall so if you're going to give it to the power users make it an explicit function you know like my hitch uh plugin that i wrote uh which is ultimately just like five lines of code with squiggly brick brackets, uh, excessive squiggly brackets, I'm sure, <laughs> um, because that could be minimized, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah. but totally, it's, it's a simple little concept that, that gives you explicit, you know, scoping power. It's something that's inherent in Dojo and it's something that I've grown to love and appreciate and I, I feel like the jQuery community deserves. And when you kind of graduate into needing to make your code more modular or or uh, uh, more, you know, less repetition, then you'll appreciate its existence. But until then, you'll you'll just look at it as five lines of random code you don't need. So, right, and yeah, muddle through. The, those are uh, those are sufficient fighting words, I think. Uh, <laughs> what did I but, did uh, I go we, off course? I'm sorry. No, Hold I mean, I, I think I think those are all very valid points, and and that's kind of why we wanted to have this segment because a lot of people 
don't hear it, at least a non-trolled argument from uh, from someone very rational on why they would prefer something somewhat some other way, you know, and and why they think one way is valid for a certain type of development and then not valid for another. Well, type I mean, of we we so talked about the bike shed earlier, you know, like yeah, yeah, I would have made exactly. it green, frankly. Like <laughs> no, red, red's an obnoxious so it's color. It's not really for an argument. Bike shed. So I'm, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I think you might be misinterpreting that that analogy because it's definitely it has to be red. So, uh, <laughs> well, anyways, uh, <laughs> and that's why. So you told us should we least should we talk about it longer? No, no, definitely not. No. Uh, you you told us your least favorite uh, part about jQuery. What what's something you love about jQuery? Maybe maybe something that you think is really elegant since since you think it's elegant, or, or what it's what is its best use case? It's another that's another loaded question. Um, <laughs> so well, officially now in Dojo 1.4, I don't care anymore, right? <laughs> like at all because I don't care about anything. No, the uh, the 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 Dojox uh, JQ module really gives us 100% API compatibility minus like animation things, and I guess that's what you're you're wanting me to to speak positively about. But I don't like jQuery's animations. Um, no, but but it sounds like you like the API enough. To I spend like the time to I make like it the again. one I like this one part. No, no, I don't because it's it's weird <laughs> and it, bo- it no, it really does. It bothers me, and I don't know enough. Like, like when you register an on-end handler for an animation on the, uh, a group of nodes or whatever, it fires the, the handler for every node, right? Like, it fires... There's no queue. If right, you, it fires yeah. some function for every node that, that ended for this particular thing or whatever, and I don't know if it accounts for the queue because I've never gotten into, like, quote, ad, like, air quotes, advanced jQuery animations, um, but it... it it doesn't seem right, even on a fundamental level, like just the API. Like, what is it? Fade two, except a duration. Oh, fade two is the worst API. It, like, yeah. like <laughs> it's just it, it's it was a drunken decision, I think. You know, yeah. and like the animate like Nyquil or no the 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 <laughs> no see because that was the problem because I drank Nyquil and then I re-implemented this in Dojo and I was like, wow, I felt really really <laughs> bad about it. Like and I kind of like it. Like I like some ability to make quick animations with nodes, but that really gets into like the core of jQuery. Like if you know what you're doing, it doesn't matter if you're using jQuery or Dojo or Mutools or Prototype or whatever, because you're going to write good code, right? And you're going to write good, fast, powerful, whatever it is that you're doing. But if you're a noob and you're doing it poorly, it it just it's like exponentially bad. No matter like writing bad animation, I don't know. How do you how do you explain that? It doesn't matter what language you're in; it's going to be bad. If you yeah, know. yeah, exactly, and it's going to be slow and like it. Yeah, you know, one thing I think about is that I've never used animate that much. Like, I feel like it's it's nice that it's in there and it's nice that it's easy. But aside from like a little background fade here and like once in a while, like you want to highlight something. I haven't had to use that much animation, uh, and what's weird is also you see a ton of jQuery, pl- like awesome jQuery plugins out there that are all pretty much like interfaces to animate. Right, right. It's you like know. we can animate this box in seven different ways based on different parameter settings that you set. Really, when if you're a good programmer, you can do that yourself. Ultimately. Uh, Pete, um, I just want to ask, like, how, you know, people that, jQuery, uh, jQuery developers, if they want to, you know, stick their toe into the dojo pool, as it were, like, what is the most appropriate way for, for someone to start getting into dojo if they're coming from a jQuery background? Well, and so back to, like, a random thought I had during my last diatribe, right? Like, <laughs> where, where I don't care anymore, like, the thing that bugs me about Dojo and having this functionality is that it's like explicit. You have to ask for it, right? So to get parents and parents all and pre all and next all and all those right. like APIs, you have to like Dojo require dojo dot node list hyphen traverse or whatever it is like module that has these extra functionalities like for node list, right? So that annoys me. And I, there's no concise way to just say, 
put this script on and I've got another script block that I can do my entire application in if I need to, right? Yeah. Because it complicates things exponentially when you need to like worry about namespaces and third party anything or whatever, right? So that's what that back to answer I guess that the initial question. Like that's what bugs me about Dojo is that it's not as easy to just consume things as as yeah, it is there's in clear, jQuery. there's not nearly as clear a path as with jQuery where you right. just include one but, file and all But you in, go. in jQuery it's like it's it's much more explicit. Like you actually have to go out and find the plugin and download it and put it somewhere on your file system where right. with Dojo it's just like, oh, you had to find out that it was already there. So it's I don't know. Uh, so I mean I I know that I mean I've been working on a Dojo project recently and a good resource for me was the Dojo the Definitive Guide by Matt Russell really helped me and I think also just I, kind of when I approached Dojo I was trying to approach it as jQuery but different and I think that if a if if a jQuery developer is approaching Dojo and I think they should because I think it's so great to be exposed to these other libraries. Um, but a jQuery developer approaching Dojo, like my advice is remember it's a different library and just be be open to sort of solving things in different ways than you would because it is a different model. But but um, but really, it's not so different a model that it's not already familiar, right? Like back it again. It depends on where you're coming from. I mean, if you're if you're very if you're so query focused, I it can be sort of a change to not be so focused on on translating everything that you would do with dollar parens into dojo.query that's not a necessarily a good approach to transitioning to it okay Word. I, <laughs> wait i i think i hear oh god i hear someone Who's i that? hear someone yelling in the background who, who is it who da? who 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 <laughs> Hey guys, it's Chris McKellar. Does the dollar sign have some sort of special meaning in JavaScript, or could it just as easily have been like the ampersand or the add symbol or something like that? Thanks. Okay, uh, awesome. Thank you very much, Chris, for our uh, first video submission to the uh, to the yayquery party line. Um, so you're asking about the dollar sign and. Um, and why why that's used. <coughs> um, so we did a little digging into this. The, the dollar sign is actually um, indicated in the ECMAScript specification as um, s uh, an identifier that should only be used with generated code. Um, in, in JavaScript's case, uh, or sorry, jQuery's case, it's not really used uh, as generated code. Um, but the other, there are a few other um, symbols that can be used as variable identifiers, um, just like the dollar sign. Um, one is obviously the underscore, um, because it's used in underscore.js. Um, but then the other uh, weird one is you can use, um, I guess, I don't know what these would be called. These are kind of like Unicode hex values. Um, we'll so you link can them in a pasty. Yeah, yeah. Out. So so basically you can do slash u and then do two hex values together um, and use that as a variable name. And it looks really bizarre, but it's valid. Um, so dollar underscore and these, these whack ass underscore is 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 where you can use. Um, as far as where it came from, I, I believe is we saw it first in prototype. Um, as the the shorthand for get element by ID, and then the bling bling function, as Alex Russell <laughs> uh, called it, um, for that was the, the the first shorthand for um, get elements by selector, basically, uh, and it's just kind of been adopted by by Moo tools and then jQuery. Um, it's just a nice, real quick shorthand for whatever. So there's only these couple of things that we can use. For for fancy fancy looking symbols, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I spent I spent like a G week and a half like trying to figure out how to make how to make euro work, right? Because it's more oh, like, man, I, I like be, I, 
<laughs> uh, like, I was just thinking about that. How I bad could that. that be? <laughs> you need to. You need to. It's it's got to be window. You know, like no period. Window square bracket hexadecimal value of you know the Unicode value of of euro. Wow. And you can't even. Yeah. 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 I was about to say. I think even we all UCF tried it, but we definitely didn't try that you, hard. Like, use the euro directly as the bling symbol <laughs> because we all know the euro is more valuable than the dollar sign. Right? <laughs> exactly. That's that. Does was it come with an inherent like, we need a, we need a performance a library list. more valuable than jQuery? Let's use the euro. <laughs> but it doesn't work, by the way. So, but yeah. but but using the dollar sign just gets into conflicts, right? Like, I mean, why the why sigil. is there a jQuery no conflict co function in the first place? Like, well, that's what I was saying. Is if there's only like these two things, then of course there are going to be conflicts. Exactly. Everybody wants them. Exactly. Why? Why? Who? Who is so? Who's so pompous that they decide that they're just you know like worth the dollar <laughs> sign in the global space? <laughs> I don't know. Are there I, people I can, that do that? I can tell you that, that John Rezig only codes using jQuery and he, he completely does he, he doesn't like using the dollar at all. And and I know a few people that just don't don't like to use the dollar, but if I couldn't use the dollar I would complain about having to uppercase the Q. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yep. Yep. But how big of a Amen. problem is it to say jQuery equals jQuery. Well, I mean, that's yeah. the same argument. How how hard is it to oh. say ver dollar sign equals dojo query, right? Yeah. yeah <laughs> no, that, that's oh. I, all, I have Ew. made that argument. I mean, that's why we don't take it. I mean, that's the argument. Who cares? It's JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> True. You can take it yourself. So, it. Rebecca, tell us about, we, we saw some new stuff in, uh, in 1.4 since our epic uh, since one epic. point more episode last epic. week. Woo! Uh, but in the uh, we saw something new, some new patch land. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, we saw dollar dot require jQuery dot require, and um, I, it's hard to say too much about it quite yet. There's only a couple of unit tests in there for it, and they, the unit tests don't really seem to cover all of the code, but. What we can see so far is that jQuery.require is going to let us uh, require scripts and guarantee the order in which they load. Now, let us require scripts not only before document ready, but also after document ready. And it'll make different decisions depending on whether it's before or after document ready and depending on whether it's a remote script or a local script. But the, the cool thing right now is that it guarantees execution order. What I'm waiting for is to see some tests where it's going to let us see whether it deals with nested requires and um, see some tests against the callback functionality that is into the, that's in the code right now. But this is a neat move to see from jQuery finally uh, as far as dependency management. And the only thing I would say is stay tuned because I'm hoping to see a whole bunch more from this $.require function before we see 1.4 come out. Brad, I think it's time. Um, I think it's time to talk a little bit about something that you might not know is there. <gasps> it's a little segment we like to call Hit It. Hit It. Hit It. Hit it. What? The little tiny things you never thought you'd see. That's so, Alex, uh, why don't you tell us um, about something kind of tricky, kind of cool? Uh, this week's hit enhancement is. Uh, Approved by uh, Peter Higgins. Uh, while he doesn't su necessarily support it, I think he said it was cool at one point I while think we he were talking. supports it okay. <laughs> um, the the hidden enhancement is quick. It's uh, it's part of the animate functionality, uh, and it supports uh, plus equals uh, in in animate uh, values. So if you wanted to change the height of a div say you could say uh, uh, you could pass an object to the anime value and say height uh, uh, colon and in a string not not in a function or anything like that you, you pass a string in that is plus equals 10 px and it will add 10 pixels to whatever it currently is so it's kind of this shortcut thing that says you don't have to check its current value and then do the addition yourself we'll do that on the back end it's a it's a little odd. It doesn't necessarily fit into any of the other API stuff, but I think it's really cool as far as just like if you know you just want to add 10 pixels, it actually saves you uh, quite a bit of code. It saves you a ton of code, right? Like, 
and that that's the beauty of it because that's the common case. I just want to add ten pixels to some arbitrary div, right. but what it what it causes as a hit on everybody that's using animate that doesn't care about that is like a number of is string checks and parsing to see if it's plus equal and if it's a you know like. Right. a bunch of stuff to do that you should be able to do and figure out yourself, right? So it's kind of taking away from the passing an object literal, like here's my values or whatever, into this fancy abstraction, which I guess is what jQuery is. But uh, so... Pete is just all about the nay. I, well, I wanted to bring up the nay because I, like, <laughs> you, you pointed out that I like this functionality, and I do. I like that yeah. it's there, but, like, that's the, that's the realism behind it, right? Like, it's not... There's a cost to it. Right, there's a cost to everything. And all of the stuff that we want to add and all of the stuff that we want to do, we can't necessarily do because, like, not everybody wants it, right? Right. So, and... Right. and there's no brilliant way to, to take out that one little bit of functionality yet in JavaScript. I think it's a question of, I mean, how bad... It, I, I think that a lot of people are willing to pay that price. I don't know if it's... Like, I, it's well, I mean, I you're, you're willing I think to... a lot of people... I think willing I'm, that, I'm willing to pay that price on my personal blog and stuff. On, okay, yeah. Like, where, where I know that I'm not like forcing someone to do something 10 million times, you know, a day, basically. Uh, but I don't, you know, I don't need to, like, I need to write better than to, to write plus equals into my, my code for my app because I need to know how big that div is going to be or I need to know that I need to control that I need to, you know, like, I need more granular control or to know ahead of time how big it's going to be and make it sure. set to a fixed site later. Uh, yeah, and, and there, there's the argument there is that that option is, is available as well. You can yes, do that. You can absolutely, do it generally. absolutely. So, so that's so. why I was being nay on the, on the whole, like, what actually is, is, is going on here, right? Like, it's a great feature, but... You shouldn't use it, <laughs> and it <laughs> might not should be there because it makes us lazy. I don't know. Um, yeah. I uh, uh, speaking of laziness, um, I know that one method that people who don't necessarily want to refactor their DOMs often use is the jQuery contains pseudo selector. Um, so. That is used uh, to select elements by their text content. And then there's also the jQuery has pseudo selector, which is used to select elements by the elements that they contain. New in jQuery 1.4, we have methods that are named the same, but don't actually duplicate <laughs> the functionality of the pseudo selectors. <sighs> so we're going to call out the new, um, yeah. we're officially calling out. Calling it out. Yay, Query. We'll you. keep calling you guys out. Yay, Query. We're coming for you. Um, on the dollar sign uh, FN contains function because it's, I don't know why it is a shortcut to has if we've always had a distinction between what contains and has are. So hopefully this is just uh, one of those 1.4 alpha quirks and we can uh, get a better consensus on what those methods should do. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little odd. Um, we also uh, also want to bring up um, this week we found a plugin. It's pretty good, and we hope you'll agree that it's the plugin. Plug love to see more unity and more core, you know, breaking up the functionality of these libraries so we could all help each other. And, and I think uh, one, of the, one of the groups, the, the pylons groups, uh, as far as web devs server side go, um, uh, love that, you know, like there's different templating engines, there's different database engines, there's different 
uh, y you know, different things. Um, so rather than use something, you know, prepackaged like Django, a lot of the pylons people think, well, I could use exactly the same thing as Django, but if I wanted to switch out the templating language, I could. So right. I, I think that JavaScript could take a lot uh, from that as well. Um, I, that is just something I'm just saying, uh, which brings me <laughs> to my next yeah. point. Just uh, saying, dude. Is uh, that... Uh, as we changed uh, callbacks to hollowbacks, uh, we wanted to make the point um, that um, although it's an important important acronym uh, JS for JavaScript, we wanted to switch that over to just saying. Uh, so from now on, if you see us use pound JS or just JS uh, capitalize or anything like that, we're we're probably talking about the phrase just. And I, I think we can so, we can give kind of permission on the behalf since we have a representative from Dojo here, we can kind of give permission from the JavaScript community that... As yeah, a whole. Exactly. Yeah, as JS. We're gonna, we are, we we are speak giving... I've goal. learned that you never want to assume that Pete is in your camp before he <laughs> says that he <laughs> is. Seriously, I'm about to tear into you guys on this one. Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't want to get into anything nasty here, but you cannot take away the JS hash because, like, we're gonna totally to fuck Dojo up Ajax. Like, Ajax, like whoever that. Is, they're gonna get screwed up. Totally screwed. Up. Hash Ajax is gonna be like we were mentioned in the Yankory podcast. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's Pete, awesome. Pete, you, Pete, you have made a you have made this the most explicit episode yet. I have think. I have I used more profanity yes. than it's ever has been used? Than like all previous profanity. I'm I sorry. So. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm like, all, I am. I think we, we are trying to earn. We're getting a call from tag. the FCC right now. Um, <laughs> Seriously, they're, the they're telling me that uh, we need to stop. So I, I guess we'll we'll run into closing. Sure. Um, we, did, we just wanted to thank uh, Pete again for giving us a different perspective. Uh, I thought it was great to have him on here because Yay. a lot of Yay, times Pete. we're... Hey, I will, I will continually come back <laughs> yeah. and be, if you be need your perspective. negative. I'll, you know, I'll just hang out and like throw out. Like, I'll be the, uh, the Hannity on Hannity and Colmes. Oh, no, hold on. Right. Colmes. <laughs> Never mind. I'm sure we'll have another nay query section at, uh, awesome. of, of and the you, podcast. Awesome. You Thank you for back. having me, though. I, I, I'm, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to talk anytime. Yay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's really important Yay. for <laughs> for jQuery developers to realize that jQuery isn't the language that you're using. You know, jQuery is not a language. It is, is an API on top of JavaScript, and there are a lot of alternatives. Um, whether you you find jQuery accessible or not, um, I, I think it, it's good to know what the options are. Um, so we'd like to give a thanks to our sponsors, uh, Devotee, uh, for all your expression engine needs, and Tiny CDN, uh, content delivery for the masses. Uh, uh, thank you for having us. Um, Rebecca, we have a phone number you can call. What, what is that again? Yes, yes, that, that phone number, if you want to call the party line, is 4434-YAY-QUERY. And uh, thanks again to our sponsors and to Pete for joining us. It has been a uh, quite a fun evening, and hope we'll see you next week. Have a good day. Bye. Have a good one, guys. Ba -da, ba -ba.